Hi, my name is Ian Duncan. I am the author of Scheme for PD, an open source external for scripting and live coding pure data with S7 Scheme Lisp. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to get started with S for PD. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is make a patch with an S for PD object. So I've got a patch here and let's create one. And assuming you've installed everything correctly, when you create an object, you should see in the PD console that S4PD was initialized successfully. So there are tutorial videos on installation, if you haven't seen those already. Now in order to make this do anything, we're obviously going to need to be able to load some code. So let's look at a few ways of loading files. The first way is to give the file name as an argument to the S4PD object. So I'm going to load a file called hello scm and you might ask right away how is it going to find this the heuristic is simple it looks in the directory of the current patcher and if it doesn't find it there it goes and looks on the pd file preference paths now if you haven't already saved your patcher looking in the current directory is obviously not going to work so in this case i saved my empty file gave it a name already and here it is in my finder window in the same directory as my scheme files so I'm going to load hello.scm. Here are the contents of hello.scm over here. I just have a call to the post function to show me that the file loaded successfully. Oh, there we go. Hello.scm loaded. And we see the initialized message again because we were recreating the object. Now, once you've created an object, if you want to reload your file, the simplest way is to reset the interpreter. So we can send it the reset message. And anytime you send a reset message, the interpreter will get rebooted entirely. So any running definitions are lost and it will reload the file that is the main argument. Okay, let's clear the console. And there we go. And if I were gonna go change this file, put some dots at the end. And now we see the new version. Okay, the second way of loading a file is to use the read message. So I'm going to load the same file with the read message. Note that I don't need any quotes or anything. This is just a PD message. And the same rules apply. As for PD, we'll look in the current directory and then on your preference paths. Clear the console. And there we go, it's loaded again. The big difference between these two is that read doesn't wipe out the interpreter. So this is really handy because you can use it to keep your code in a couple of different files. You can have your base file in here, and then you can be actively working on maybe some functions or some variable definitions. And as you update that code, you can reload it without wiping out any other definitions in the actively running program. So that's a hot code reloading, and it's really convenient for building applications interactively. Now the third way of loading code is for us to load code from the scheme files themselves. So I'm going to open my file hello2 and in hello2 I use the function load from path to load hello.sem. You'll note in this case we are using quotation marks because that's scheme syntax. So load from path is just a wrapper around the scheme function load. The only difference is it goes and finds the file using our rules, current patch or directory, and then PD path preferences before loading it. Okay, so if this worked and we load, uh, let's clear our console. We're gonna load hello2. And we should see both hello2 and hello get loaded. There we go. Hello loaded, hello2 loaded, and we're initialized. So that's how you load code. Three ways for loading code. Now, of course, uh, we want to do things. So how do we make the interpreter do things aside from running functions in the code? So the first way is to just send a message. And as for PD, if it's not a reserved message like symbol, read, or reset, S4PD is going to interpret our message as if it's a piece of scheme code 
to run surrounded by parentheses. Okay, so let's give you an example of that. I'm going to say post hello world and do it as a as a keyword. So this is one symbol. Okay, post hello world. I'm going to connect these up. And now when I click on this message, that's going to post. It's going to execute. There we go. Hello world. It's going to execute as if I've done that. Now the reason that's handy is it gives us a really easy way to make callbacks into the interpreter. So I'll demonstrate that now. Let's just clear everything. We'll reset. We'll clear our console. So I'm going to get rid of this. Now let's go make a handler. We're going to connect. Uh, we'll put a number box down here. Okay. I'm going to make a function in my hello2 file. I'm going to call it out square. I'm going to try and spell square correctly. And I'm going to give it an argument, num. And I'm going to tell it that the body of the function is to send out outlet 0 num times itself. OK, there's our function. We're going to save the file and reset. OK, we're loaded. And so now I can trigger that function by just making an S for PD message with out square num. Let's say out square four and connect it up. And connect it up. There we go. And clicking on this, we should see 16 coming out the bottom. There we go. It's running. So normally when I'm doing this, at least when I'm building something, I'll put little helpers in here to let me know that it actually ran. Okay. And then we can turn this into an interactive widget by using the uh, dollar sign interpolation. Dollar one, put in a number, Okay, and let's clear our console. We should be able to see our function running. There we go. Oh, and we didn't get the post message because I forgot to reload the code. So I'm going to click reset. And now we're getting the post message. There we go. So that's the easiest way to make handlers that you trigger from other widgets. You can use that to receive MIDI input. You can use it from any of PD's various knobs and sliders or number boxes, whatever you want. And it's a very easy way to start triggering functions. And that's a normal way of getting Scheme for PD to do something uh, interactively. So that's the first way of executing some code. The catch with this is it only works for a message um, that is kind of a, a flat, non-nested expression. And that's because this is just going into the s pd object as a series of PD atoms. So if we have something in there that's not a valid atom, it's going to get confused. It's not going to work properly. So how do we do it if we need to use nested expressions? I'll show you that next. So let's get rid of that. Let's make a message that has some code with some expressions. We're going to say post um, answer is and then 42 plus 99. Okay. So that's obviously not just a simple set of PD atoms. How we're going to get this code to run. And so the way we do that is right now we need to make some objects to convert this into one string symbol. In a subsequent version, I'm going to get it so that you don't need to do this, but that's not quite working yet. So we're going to use a foodie format dash u. And then below that, we'll use list to symbol, connect those, connect 
like this to s for pd. And then what I usually do is make myself a receive object. I typically call it receive code. Connect that up. Okay. And so now if I make a send object with send code, we can send full scheme code and S for PD. So let's clear our console, see if it works. Just give myself a syntax check, looks good. And there we go. Answer is 141 over there. So that can be used for code of any amount of complexity. There is one catch that you should know about though. S for PD is expecting this to be one parenthetical expression, one S expression. So if you wanted to do two things at once, let's say you wanted to uh, say post 42, and then you also wanted to out 42, out 0 42. Okay, and you put those back to back. That's not going to work. All we get is the first one. The second one didn't happen. There are two solutions to this. We can put a comma in the middle so that this becomes two separate PD messages. There we go. Now we're getting both. Or we can change the scheme code so that this becomes one valid S expression. And we could do that by putting a begin around it. Okay. There we go, we're seeing post and we're seeing, well, you wouldn't know it was happening because I didn't change this. There we go, now it's working. So that's your two ways of putting code in. And there is a third way that I'll show you that's a little fancier, and that's how I normally do most of my work, to be honest. Although I'm always triggering things with the simple messages. And that is that we can send code over OSC directly from an editor. So let's take a look at doing that. So in order to do that, we need, at least the way I do it, there might be multiple ways of doing this. We have a net receive object with the OSC port that I'm going to use. Okay, we connect that to an OSC parse object. And then we need one more piece, which is to strip off the resulting symbol. And now we have a message that will work for going straight into S for PD. Oops. So this will take any valid OSC message. Boy, that's flailing here. And what is going on? There we go. That will take any valid OSC message that comes in over port 7000 and convert it into a format that the interpreter can run itself. So let's take a look at how we do that. I'm not going to get into the details. Uh, I'm not going to explain the details too much, but I'll just show it briefly to you on screen. And anybody who wants to ought to be able to build something similar themselves. Okay, so the way I do it is I have a Python script. It happens to be called send to max because I also use it for max. Okay. And my Python script, I'll just show it to you on the screen here. It uses the liblo library, and it takes everything that goes into standard input into the Python script, turns it into a string, and sends it out as an OSC message over that port. And then separately, in Vim, I have this command here, wired to uh, some keys, and that allows me to take whatever's underneath my visual buffer and pipe it into the Python script and out it goes. So I'll just leave that on the screen so that interested parties can uh, reverse that and make their own if they want, but I'll show it to you working. So let's say from OSC and use my leader key. And there we go it's coming out this side. So I could use this to make function definitions. I can use it to reload code, um, whatever I want. So let's demonstrate that briefly. We'll say uh, my fun, my fun uh, three, and we'll go out zero. 
plus oops, what am I doing here? It's gonna be a variable. My fun num out zero will say hundred plus num. Okay, there's my function. I'm gonna send that entire function definition out over the OSC network. Okay, it worked. You see my fun over here. That's the return value of defining the function. And so now I could call the function. My fun four. Oh, let's use three. And we should see it come out the outlet. There we go. And so that's uh, the combination of using all of those is how I get code into S4PD and how I build applications. And this should give you enough to get going and to uh, build some fun projects yourself. There is a lot more information inside the help file. So now that you've seen this, you should be able to make sense of the help file. It talks about pretty much all the functionality of the object is covered in there right now. And I have also written a tutorial on learning S7 Scheme for Scheme for Max and Scheme for Pure Data, which I'll put in the YouTube description, but is also linked for the project page. So if you're new to the language, that doesn't assume any programming ability and will teach you everything you need to know to uh, get started and build fun projects in Scheme for Pure Data. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed the project. Please do get in touch and let me know how you make out. It'd be great to know that it's running, especially great to know that it's running on Windows, uh, that you're not having any issues there. And um, once that's done, we'll, uh, we'll get it up into the package manager and there will be some subsequent releases with new features in the pipe that are currently in the Scheme for Max version. Talk to you soon.